Welcome back. What's going on? I hope everyone is doing great. Today we will be doing SSTI or server side template injection room from Try Hack Me. So in this room we will be going over the the vulnerability and we will explain every aspect of uh, that vulnerability from detection, identification, syntax, exploitation, examination, etc. So let's start right away with the uh, practical scenario. So basically, let's go first to the vulnerable page. So I have a page, as you can see, uh, the IP, the port is 5000, and we have a profile. So basically, you're given a page, and you know that, uh, actually, you're giving the testing URL. And here, uh, if you type Jake, for example, you will receive um, the profile page of Jake. So if you want to change to another user, you could just simply type user, or any other user, you will see the user page will be displayed. So most of the time, when you're testing for server-side template injection, you will need an injection point. And most of the time, the injection point is similar to the one we are testing right now. Profile page of an existing user, um, you, you may find that in search forms, in search boxes, whenever there is a parameter, that controls a value or whenever there is um, a point in the URL where a value dynamically changes by the user, of course, there is a probability that you can try testing for SSTI. So in this case, how to test for SSTI? So let's first see, uh, open my notes. All right. So let's first see how we can detect that. So these are the characters that you can use to test for SSTI. With dollar sign denotes the variable name. So most of the time you will not use dollar sign. You will use these one of these characters first to see if the application returns an error. So our aim here is to use one of these parameters instead of the name of the username. So when there is an error thrown out uh, or displayed back to us, we know that there is a vulnerability. But how to use these characters? Basically, we can try them one by one. So first we try one brace, second we try two braces, and then we follow th them uh, one by another until we receive an error. So first we try with one, So nothing, right? Okay, next one. You try both. You follow it by the next one. So instead of one, you're going to use two. And now you receive an error. So internal server error. The server cannot handle the request. So this means that there is server side template injection vulnerability. So the next thing you have to determine is what kind of template engine the application is using. Most of the time, the template engine is powered by Python. So our job here is to find what is that template engine because this will drive what the kind of efforts are the kind of payloads that we are allowed to use efficiently in order to receive a remote shell. So for that, we will use uh, payload all the things. So let me first see where is the page. Okay, so payload all the things. So paid all the things here, they included a map here. In this map, you will know what to do. So there is an expression you will try against the application and based on the uh, result of the expression, you will decide what way to take in order to reach what kind of template engine is running. There is Mako, there is Jinja2, there is Twig. So first suggestion is to try the following expression. So let's try that. Dollar sign for a variable for a value uh, for a variable, and then seven times seven. So welcome to the profile of seven times seven. Let's go back to the diagram. So, as you can see, what we received back is the same, uh, the same with that what we entered. We didn't receive a value, right? So this means that you received here a value, seven times seven and forty. Uh, 9. If you receive 49, 
it means you'll have to go this way. If you didn't receive 49, which is our case, we would need to go this way. So next, we have to just decide how to proceed from this point. So it could be Jinja, it could be Twig, or whatever. So if we, if we go here, right, from this point on to that point, if you go back to the application here and type, um, let's see what do we have to type here. Okay, two. Let's type two now. One here and one. And now you receive 49. The, so the expression has been evaluated. If you go back, all right, and um, so here, not vulnerable, it means that you haven't received anything. But here, if you received uh, something similar to that, you will have to determine or you will have to, uh, you know, find out if it is, was Jinja 2, Twig, or Unknown. So in my case, it was Jinja 2. And that was the answer for this question. So what template engine is being used in this application? It was Jinja 2. And the answer for the previous one was what sequence of characters causes the application to throw an error, which was double braces. So now you have determined the engine. Let's see this one, 49. Yeah, so with double braces, you will receive a value. Without double braces, single braces, let's try. See, it doesn't work. Yeah, it works, but you receive you don't receive the value. The value or the expression is not evaluated. If you put, um, let's go back to the, okay. So here, try this one. Put one here. And one here. And then single coat, single coat. Oh my God, look how many sevens you received. Seven times seven. So the seven here has been, uh, you know, repeated seven times because we have inserted quotes for the second seven. That's why it has been evaluated as this one. So with double quotes, uh, with double braces, the, eva the, eva the, uh, the expression is evaluated. But with single braces, with single brace, the expression is not evaluated. So if you go back here, since the expression here has not been evaluated with single brace, then our way is this one, not this one. So the, um, the engine is Jinja2 or Twig. So it could be one of, one of them. I know you may ask me how, to, how did you find that it was Jinja2 or Twig. Honestly, I just tried with the uh, challenge here and it was Jinja2 this one here so the answer here I tried both the correct was Jinja 2 okay now the next step is after I have determined that the application is vulnerable to SSTI and we have determined the kind of template engine now it's time to find out what payload we can use to start a remote shell before determining what kind of payload to find just first remember or Go to the documentation of the page of the, uh, um, you know, the engine, and just read through the syntax. So you will need that if you want to understand how the um, template en engine works. So basically, read through that. But in a nutshell, these are the most commonly used expressions of Jinja two. So basically, we use double braces to mark the start of a print statement <coughs> and of course these are uh, oriented towards the right these are oriented towards the left open to the left these are open to the right the same with this one one brace and one percentage sign is the start of a block statement the same with the end of the block statement you just put that oriented to the left and you have here pound sign and brace to start a comment. So this is helpful to understand how the payload works. Now if you go to payload all the things, 
if you scroll down to the payloads for Jinja okay so if you go to this line yeah this one so here is a payload that will execute ID command as you can see it starts with um, let me make zoom zoom this all right What about this? Okay, so as you can see, the payload starts with double braces and it ends with double braces to just instruct the server that this is the start of a block statement. And inside the braces, we have some uh, it's Python statement. And uh, as you can see here, it uses the pop open method or OS pop open to just execute ID command. <laughs> Of course, the method changes. Sometimes it uses context, cycler, joiner, namespace. Now you can still use the previous payloads. For example, uh, let's take this one. It uses the subclasses and MRO to basically to read the content of the password file. But if you want to just execute simple system commands, you will have to stick with this one. Now, if you take this one and try it, You see now, we have successfully executed an ID command on the system. And now, in order to receive a remote shell, so just type create listener on your machine, and go back, simply here type nc-lvp. Actually, it's better if I zoom in. Yeah, so nc-lvp. Or, yeah, I, I guess I have to just type my IP address. So let's see here my IP address. And the listening port is 4545. Let's check out. So it worked. As you can see, I received a shell from the machine, the machine IP, and now you have remote shell from the machine. You can just start now uh, exploring and enumerating the machine. Okay. So that's ultimately the process of enumerating and exploiting server-side injection vulnerability. Now let's take a look at the underlying code and why it was vulnerable. If you go back to the code here, so it uses Flask from Python, as you can see from this line. And then the template engine starts here. So we have we defined a, a function for the profile page, and here we use a template, all right, we say welcome to the profile of user. As you can see, the user is evaluated as an expression between braces. So it means that the input we put here in the URL is directly concatenated into the code and rendered by the template, which is the uh, insecure method of using uh, template engines. Now the correct way, actually, or to remediate this vulnerability, what we can do here, we can just say that here we define a variable called user, or let's take this code as it is, and go down, say here, okay, so we imported the flask, define the function of the profile, page and then we use here we define user equal re dot sub to include a whitelist in python and then here we include the expressions that are allowed to be used by the user right so for example we put here um, let me bring on double quotes so between double quotes say here we used i'm having a hard time printing okay so we used kind of regular expression to include the allowed characters. So from A to Z upper cases, right? And also A to Z lower cases. And also we include numbers. All of these are allowed, right? And everything else is prohibited. So after that, comma, and we, we put other double quotes, and then we put the variable. 
this is the variable that is controlled by the user so here this one the user it was the variable we were playing with here so now whenever whatever the user is putting or sending to the application it will be just um, evaluated for the whitelist here if it contains any characters any character outside this whitelist it will be rejected so after that we evaluate templates welcome to the profile and then we put here double braces just to evaluate the expression double braces and that's it so here we make sure that the username supplied by the user does not include characters outside of the list we supplied in our application and then we feed the user variable to the uh, template in order for the template engine to render it back to the user so that's how it works I hope you like the video let me go back again go over the answers so for detection the answer what sequence of characters causes the application to throw an error double braces identification it's asking about the template engine the syntax so it's asking how do you start a comment in Jinja 2 if you rely on the documentation you will find that it is brace and one pound the pound uh, character exploitation here just use the uh, as I showed you from earlier and here's the question what is the result of the who am I shell command let's take the payload take this one paste instead of ID type who am I uh, no that's not good ID Welcome to the profile of safe template reference. I guess I have a problem. Let's circle back to my machine. Okay. If we go to take the original one. Okay. So now change that to who am I? And the answer is Jake. Next one examination. Nothing is required. Remediation. Nothing is required. Case study. So in March 2016, a user reported an SSTI vulnerability in one of the Uber's subdomains. The vulnerability was present within a form that allowed the user to change their profile name, much similar to our case. Much like an example, the user had control over an input which, has, which was then reflected back to the user via email. You can read about that here. So the question now, what payload was used to confirm SSTI? Let's go over the report. I found an RCE in rider.uber.com. First, if you change the profile name to this expression and you receive a mail, your Uber account information has been updated. In MailBuddy, you can see your name become seven sevens. So here you see the expression has been evaluated, right? So the payload was this one submit not correct see why this didn't work copy it one more time answer submit okay now it works so that was it send you send me guys your feedback in the comments and see you in the next video